The criminal justice system often sparks intense debate, with opinions clashing on various issues. Yet, amid the sea of conflicting perspectives, one undeniable fact stands clear. Some individuals, through their heinous actions, have shown they must be kept away from society. Around the world, there are offenders whose crimes are so horrific that they are held in maximum security to ensure they can do no further harm. Today, we'll explore the cases of such individuals. These prisoners, considered some of the most dangerous in existence, reveal the darkest sides of human nature and underscore the vital importance of incarceration in protecting the public from extreme threats. The journey begins now. Are you prepared to uncover the hidden truths locked within these walls? Watch if you dare. Number one on our list is Michael Brady. Michael Brady is a prisoner infamous for his role in a violent escape attempt at the Pasquotank Correctional Institution in North Carolina on October 12, 2017. An event that stands as one of the most brutal and tragic in the history of the state's prison system. During the attempted breakout, Brady, along with other inmates, orchestrated a deadly plan that resulted in the murder of four prison employees, shocking the community and highlighting critical issues within the correctional system. Before this incident, Brady already had a history of serious criminal activity. In 2013, he was convicted of attempted murder after shooting at a state trooper in Durham, North Carolina. This violent background foreshadowed the severity of the 2017 escape attempt. The plan involved setting a fire to create chaos within the facility, hoping the distraction would provide an opportunity to flee. However, the attempt was ultimately thwarted, leaving behind a trail of devastation and raising sobering questions about prison security and staff safety. In the aftermath, Brady was charged and tried for the murder of the four employees. The incident became a focal point in discussions about prison reform, shedding light on systemic flaws in managing high-risk inmates and protecting correctional staff. The tragedy also underscored the dangers faced by those working in such facilities. Brady's conviction and sentencing for his role in the 2017 events have left lasting scars, not only for the victims' families and the survivors, but also on the broader conversation surrounding the operation and safety of correctional institutions. The case remains a chilling reminder of the potential for violence within the prison system and the need for robust measures to prevent such incidents in the future. Number two on our list is Martez Abram. Martez Abram is a convicted prisoner whose actions shocked the community of South Haven, Mississippi, and resonated nationwide. In July 2019, Abram carried out a shooting at a Walmart store, an attack that left two employees dead and an officer injured. This tragic event not only claimed lives, but also left the community grappling with grief and a sense of senseless loss. The shooting occurred after Abram had been suspended from his job at Walmart, reportedly due to an incident involving a knife. This suspension, along with other circumstances that surfaced during legal proceedings, may have contributed to the motives behind his actions. The tragedy left a deep scar on South Haven with the victim's families and the broader public mourning the loss and seeking answers. Abram was arrested following the shooting and his trial focused on the charges related to the violent attack. The proceedings examined the events leading up to the incident, shedding light on workplace tensions and the factors that might have precipitated the crime. The case also sparked discussions about the pervasive issues of workplace violence and gun control, highlighting the urgent need for preventive measures to avoid such devastating acts. Ultimately, Abram's legal fate was sealed by the gravity of his crimes, with the courts determining his sentence based on the evidence presented. The case remains a sobering reminder of how violence can erupt in ordinary settings, underscoring the importance of addressing the underlying causes of such tragedies. As the story of Martez Abram comes to a close in the legal sense, the impact of his actions lingers. For the victim's families, the community, and the nation, the memory of this tragedy serves as both a call for change and a somber reflection on the fragility of safety in everyday life. Thank you for joining us at Crime Chronicle. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications. Number three on our list is Aileen Warnos. Aileen Warnos, born on February 29, 1956, lived a life marked by tragedy, abuse, and chaos from a very young age. Her story is one of profound hardship, shaped by a troubled childhood and a series of traumatic experiences that ultimately led her down a dark and violent path. Forced to fend for herself, Warnos turned to sex work as a means of survival, a decision that would set the stage for a series of crimes that shocked the nation. Between 1989 and 1990, Warnos killed seven men in Florida. She claimed that the murders were acts of self-defense against rape, or attempted rape while she was working as a prostitute. However, her claims were met with skepticism, and during a highly publicized trial, she was convicted of six of the murders. 
Her case drew widespread attention, highlighting issues such as the treatment of female offenders, the death penalty, and the long-term effects of abuse and neglect on mental health. Throughout her trial and appeals, Warnos displayed erratic behavior and made accusations of conspiracies within the police and judicial systems. These actions offered a glimpse into her troubled mental state, complicating public perceptions of her guilt and motivations. Despite spending over a decade on death row and pursuing multiple appeals, Warnos eventually chose to stop fighting her legal battles. She stated that she preferred execution over continuing to live in prison. On October 9, 2002, Warnos was executed by lethal injection at Florida State Prison. Her final words, I just like to say, I'm sailing with the rock and I'll be back like Independence Day with Jesus, added another layer of intrigue to her complex legacy. Her case remains a focal point in discussions about the intersection of mental health, gender, systemic inequality, and the criminal justice system. Warnos's life and crimes continue to provoke debates about the factors that drive individuals to commit such acts and the societal structures that fail to prevent them. Number four on our list is Nico Jenkins. Nico Jenkins may not be a household name, but his haunting mugshot captured widespread attention in 2019, sparking viral intrigue. Yet behind the chilling image lies a series of brutal crimes and a life shaped by hardship and violence. Born into a troubled family in Omaha, Nebraska, Jenkins grew up surrounded by neglect, substance abuse, and criminal behavior, which included theft and even murder. From a young age, Jenkins exhibited troubling tendencies, engaging in carjacking by 16 and committing acts of violence, including participating in prison riots and attacking guards during his incarcerations. In a shocking 10-day spree in 2013, Jenkins murdered four individuals in Omaha, crimes that horrified the community and drew national attention. One of his victims had been a prior acquaintance from prison, while the others were strangers. The murders were marked by their brutality, with Jenkins targeting his victim's head, back, face, and in one particularly gruesome instance, the groin. His arrest came soon after, initially for unrelated charges of making terroristic threats. However, further investigations linked him to the killings in Omaha's 4th Street area. During an extensive eight-hour interview, Jenkins claimed his murders were sacrifices to honor Apophis, an ancient Egyptian deity associated with chaos. His declarations added a disturbing layer to an already chilling case. Despite citing severe mental illness and pleading guilty, a panel of three judges sentenced him to death. He also received an additional 450 years in prison for related weapons charges. Efforts to appeal his sentence have repeatedly failed, with the United States Supreme Court declining to review his case. Jenkins' story continues to serve as a grim reminder of the depths of human violence and the complexities of addressing mental health within the criminal justice system. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell icon so you won't miss any of our future deep dives. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay safe, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next video.